wanted to show you how I make these uh, frit, frit uh, fused glass landscapes of the mountains. Um, this one is the largest one I've done. It's really not huge. Um, but because when you get them too big, they get kind of heavy for the wall. But um, I'm going to show you on a smaller series that I'm working on how I actually do this process. So um, I've got three laid out, uh, three of a series, and the intention was people can buy them individually or actually put them side by side. And if they wanted to buy the larger one, they can. Um, two of them are glued and one of them is not. So I've got the fused glass pieces laid down on the, the way I want it, but I haven't done anything yet. And the very first thing I do is actually to paint the background. So I do the sky, I want sort of like a sunrise, and I've used acrylic paint, and then behind the glass, which you probably can't see, I've painted like a, I don't know if you call it an army green color, um, just in case there's gaps so it doesn't look bad. And to show you what the glass looks like is, this is actually made from recycled wine bottles. Um, this is how it comes out in the kiln. This one's actually a little shinier. It depends on the bottle itself and the color as to what it looks like. And um, you crush the glass. And here's another piece to show you a different you can see this one's not as shiny and it's a rougher texture. But you actually crush the glass. I have an electric um, frit maker, but you can do it by hand. Then you have to sift the glass to get it to um, be different consistencies. Um, so because I think in real life the more texture is closer to you and the farther away that you get in, in real life with the mountains, the more hazy things get. I chose to try to put the smoother glass towards the back and the lighter colors of the green a little bit more towards the back. Um, that's in the ideal world anyway. So you can see there's different colors. There's many different colors of wine glass or uh, wine bottle glass, which is surprising, but um, you'd think all the green would be the same, but it's not. Okay, so to glue this, I use... Um, a sturdy glue called E6000 and it's uh, petroleum based very gooey it's not like glue <laughs> anyway it's very strong so um, I, when I do this I start with the back pieces and I layer the next layer on top of those with each consecutive layer going on top until you get to the last and uh, so I'll just show you with a couple of pieces with this what that looks like. Oh, and you also might want to photograph uh, the piece that you have laid down because as you remove the pieces to glue them, you can lose track of where you have each piece. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. But anyway, I've got a small blue piece here for my blue hazy mountains. Um, kind of like how that blue looks in the picture. So I'm going to add that. And, uh, and the next one is actually a, this was a very pale blue bottle, but it came out um, like a silver color. So, and the fun thing about this glue is once it starts coming out, it doesn't want to quit coming out, so be careful where you lay the thing. Um, now it gets tricky when you get to the next layer um, because... It, the pieces get raised up and um, they tilt and then you're trying to glue one piece to another and there might be a space underneath. So what I've learned to do is I can either use small pieces of broken glass underneath these once I need to adjust things or I can use small glass beads and you've probably seen them at the dollar store. Sometimes I use these for spacers. So when I get up to it starts tilting or whatever, like this piece might need a spacer. I'll glue the bead down onto the base. I'll put glue on top of it and then I'll 
if I need more, I'll add them to uh, kind of make it a little more three-dimensional and stand out. And that's pretty much it. I'll show you the finished picture once I get it glued. So I've finished the piece, and I've got all the pieces glued down. I'm waiting for it to dry. And I'll just um, hold the camera closer so you can see what it looks like. And this is the type of piece that kind of looks better if you stand off from a distance and look at it. And that's what you get. It's I consider this mixed media because I paint the background and then I use um, the glass to mix in with it. So this is Tina from serendipitini.com.